people are finding various ways to do this now that uh, battery costs are coming down, charging is going up, uh, the value proposition is getting to be much more of a level playing field. Uh, I've been in business 40 years, as you mentioned in the introduction, the last 20 has been in electric vehicle powertrains, and so I've seen the rise of the value proposition over time, and it's now getting, I think, very interesting. Very interesting. So, building on that, uh, we spent a lot of time recently going around the world to the different regions to see how consumers are reacting to vehicles, and you see slightly different things in each of those regions. So, in China, due to the sponsorship of the government and a lot of lower priced vehicles coming in that help you to get around things like the plate, the number plate that you have to buy, $10,000. Um, we've seen a greater adoption. And since a lot of young people are buying vehicles there, really from 25 to 34 year olds, their acceptance of the product is much greater as well. So they're already looking in that space. They already saved $10,000 from the plate to buy the vehicle. And so they're already looking there. When we go to Europe, we see, again, adoption is um, coming fast because people are considering that in the future they will be locked down, so they're starting to see a value proposition rise. And here in the US, it's much more patchy. But I saw something that I thought very interesting here, and that is the desire to want the product. Because once you want that product, you may be willing to add more resources to it. If you imagine an iPhone in the early days, um, and you want somebody, I can give you a phone and it's three times more expensive than what you have today, they'd laugh at you. And if you ask somebody to look at an iPhone in those days, do you know what that is? They'd say, yeah, I see it, it's a box this size. And um, and you know what it does? Yes, I poked it for a minute in a shop and I know what it does. The fact is they didn't know what it does. They only knew that after owning it or having it for a week or so. And we've spoken to a lot of customers, California and, and uh, in those areas, who have performance EVs, and they wouldn't buy a nice vehicle at any price ever again. I think many of you have met people like that as well. So once they realize that's what they want, they see it as a new product category, they tell everybody they know. And then there's a software update, and they tell everybody they know the next week as well. So that factor of how that will spread across the country is, is difficult to estimate. It took about a decade for an I iPhone, but that's the pull from consumers. Now, but you may say that's at the higher end, but once consumers have the desire to get it, the pull will be even greater. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, how, you know, do you think that evangelism spreads to mass market electric vehicles as well? Because we all know about the incredible acceleration of the ones at the top end. Yeah, so it's, I would say the factors are on the best vehicles at the moment, the ones that customers love most, it's not just one thing. So it's not just the acceleration. It's they see it as a different product category. Mm -hmm. And certainly if you drive those products for a, a week or so, they feel newer, and there's many reasons for that. And it's that feeling of this is the new category, this is an all new product. That's what drives the evangelism, that's drive, what drives so much excitement for them, and people are willing to allocate more resources to that. Yeah. So maybe I'll add, um, I, think, you know, I think it's a combination of things. I think certainly I can agree with both of my colleagues. On, on the one hand, we have to get sort of to a point where there's a, you know, a wide choice of products in the marketplace and a choice of products that are um, uh, you know, very, very uh, desirable by consumers. Um, and I think we're getting to a very interesting moment in time when a lot of products are coming to the market and it's gonna get a whole lot more interesting in the next 12 to 18 months. The second thing is uh, uh, you know, being sort of from a very classical product planning function um, you know, typically what you would do is you would, uh, you know, plan your product uh, so and so many months in, a, in advance, and then at one point you would decide to launch that product. Um, uh, in a little bit different way in this case, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, months ago now, um, about one to two years ago, installed a team in internally which has looked just importantly at um, the infrastructure and everything that has to come with the EV. And I think this is absolutely key as well, um, as was pointed out earlier, because um, uh, there are a lot of myths in the marketplace. There, there, there are a lot of myths by, by consumers. I think that was hinted at a little bit. And you know, just to follow that uh, an analogy of iPhone, um, you know, uh, our old cell phones used to, uh, used to run without a battery for about a week. Um, and uh, so now, uh, if you sort of tell the consumer that they're gonna charge every day and probably not get through their battery, if they're using their phone uh, heavily, 
they would also kind of struggle with that proposition. And we liken that actually to charging as a challenge as well. So there's a lot of aspects that we had to look at from uh, sort of the ecosystem point of view. We did. And I think we have a very compelling offer coming to the market. And I think that's absolutely key. Yeah.